Today, I'm flying one of the world's best first class flights on board Singapore Airlines, and I have it all to myself. With just four first class suites on board their Boeing 777, this is one of the most exclusive cabins flying today. And at a staggering cost of $8,000 a ticket, what exactly is the deal with SQ First? From one of the comfiest, widest beds in the sky, top shelf vintage champagne, the finest caviar, and signature Singapore service, I'm here to give my brutally honest review of what it's really like. Of course, the challenge for me is to actually fly Singapore Airlines, with the country being somewhat inaccessible for most of the past two years. But today, I'm exploiting a loophole, and you can too. Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. You join me today at Frankfurt International Airport here in Germany, where I'm going to be starting my journey today on Singapore Airlines First Class. Now, it's super early now, it's about sort of 6 a.m. So without any more to say, let's head straight over to the check-in and go and check in for our flight. Do you happen to know if the cabin is empty in first class? It is, yeah? Right then, all checked in for my flight. Uh, various things that need to happen to fly to the US at the moment. Main thing being a COVID test and a flight back. So yeah, that's all sorted. Now I've got to sort out what I'm going to do with this massive coat. Because after this, I'm actually going to Canada and to Calgary. But currently it's minus 30. Oh, I'll tell you what, it's a lot nicer without that big coat on. I mean, it's needed at this time of the year, but... Whew. With that all sorted, now it's time to go through security. And thankfully, it all seems pretty quiet. A few moments later... Right then, all through security, uh, as swift as it can be. There was thankfully a separate uh, first and business class channel. There won't be the same going through passport control now. Um, so let's hope there's not too much of a queue. And of course, I will not be taking the automated border control because sadly, the UK no longer gets access to that. So I'm through with the all passports over here. Let's put the camera down and go through. Right, it's now time to check out the Senator Lounge. Now I was here way back last summer and you couldn't eat or drink in here because of regulation, but you could downstairs in the terminal. I think it's changed now, hopefully. One thing that's quite cool about this lounge, and unfortunately it's a little bit dark still, is it does have some awesome views out over the runway. There's currently one of those lounges that uh, you can hear a pin drop, which I actually quite like at this time in the morning. So I'm gonna keep my speaking to an absolute minimum. So um, yeah, cheers. The Senator Lounge features a fully stocked bar, first class seating area, and fortunately for Lufthansa only, a self-serve buffet and spa. Right, so that was, uh, that did the job. Wouldn't say it's the best lounge in the world, but the coffee was fantastic. Fresh barista coffee, can't go wrong with that. So now I have the long uh, mission to my gate, actually. It's right next to the Senator Lounge, which is very convenient. So let's head over there now before I end up getting late and miss my flight. Here we go. I can see the gate just over here. I'm aware everyone's boarding, but I just want to get a quick shot of this plane. Here we are then, Singapore's Boeing 777. Don't you just love that livery? There's a separate channel here for first in business. Of course, premium economy and economy boards from just over here. Why is this always the case with me? Lastminute.com. Got to finish this, apparently. This is a uh, basically a statement to say that you have been vaccinated from COVID and you've had a COVID test, it's negative. So uh, let's get this so we can get on board. After rushing through my final document checks, I'm finally permitted to board. I'm met by the Singapore Airlines station manager who personally escorts me to the plane. A great touch for first class passengers. Hey guys. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, that's great, thank you so much. I'm shown to my seat one foxtrot, and wow, this is special. I'll stow my carry-on today in the middle suite, so I have access when needed throughout the flight. Now, let's get settled in. It's a gorgeous cabin, and with just one row of first class, it feels very exclusive. I'm provided with a pre-departure Evian and some macadamia nuts. There is, however, no champagne served on the ground, unfortunately. In what seems like no time at all, the safety video is screened and the cabin is prepared for pushback. With that, we depart from stand, so I get my seatbelt on, which is quite the feat given the width of this seat. And we continue out over to the runway. See you later, rainy Germany. It's time to get above the clouds where the sun is always shining. Well, join the day. 
As we hurtle down the runway, I guess it's time to announce today's route. I'll be flying on this unique Fifth Freedom route from Frankfurt over to New York City. With a flight time of around 8 hours and flying 4,000 miles, it offers possibly the most comfortable way across the pond. Right guys, so we've just reached altitude around 15 minutes after takeoff. Um, Seatbelt sign is still on, apparently it's going to be a bit of a turbulent ride to begin with today. Um, but it's okay guys, because we have some Dr. P. One of my favourites, of course, as you know from watching the channel, uh, Krug is up there as one of my best. But um, I have to say, this is more than adequate. So cheers. As I sip away at my champagne, I'm asked what I'd like to eat for my lunch. Now, unfortunately, SQ does not provide physical menus, but I'm offered a tablet to view my options. It's really impressive. Let me know what you'd choose down below. They also offer a unique feature called Book the Cook, where you can choose from a wider menu before flying. So, as I settle into my seat, I just can't quite believe the amount of room that I have today. Now, bear in mind this is their 777. It's by no means their largest first class offering. In fact, the A380 takes that crown with their brand new suite, which I will be trying at a future date. So be sure to subscribe to the channel to see that. Okay, Will, what's this suite actually like? In short, it's very impressive, laid out in a one to one. Whilst it doesn't feature doors, it cocoons you in privacy, allowing you to sink into the fine Italian leather seats whilst gliding your way to your destination. The seat has a few quirks we'll go through now. Firstly, a mirror hidden behind a glossy black door. And just below, there's a small stowage closet, where you'll find the SQ Bang & Lufsen headphones, complete with hygiene covers, which is a nice touch I've not seen before. To your right, hidden behind your pillow, is a sliding door which reveals USB charging ports and oddly an iPod plug-in port. Just under the TV is an HDMI port along with a universal power outlet. There's a conveniently placed reading light which is similar in style to the one provided in SQ's business class. To your left is the IFE remote, used to control the TV as it's not a touchscreen. Singapore always seem to have a consistently good movie selection, almost on par with market leader Emirates. After another top up of Dom, let's get the tray table out and have some food. First up is my new favourite airline dish, chicken satay. It's a signature dish for Singapore Airlines and I have to admit it's a hard act to follow. The chicken is succulent and fresh with the peanut satay sauce bursting with flavour. More please! After polishing off the satay, it's time for my table to be set, ready for my appetisers. It's set beautifully and I'm happy to see this hasn't been scaled back for Covid. I'm offered a selection of warm breads. The garlic bread, by the way, was outstanding. This was served with balsamic and olive oil. Okay, it's that time. SQ served 50 gram Russian Ossetra caviar, which retails at around $100. Presentation is impeccable. Served, of course, by a mother of pearl spoon and complemented with creme fraiche, egg yolk and whites on bellinis. It may be a rather acquired taste, but I absolutely love caviar and it's the hallmark of a true first class experience. Next up, it's time for a prawn salad. This was delicate, fresh and delicious. Next up, the FA insisted I try the cauliflower soup. It was divine, but given I've now had three starters, it may be time to undo my jeans button to attack my mane. It will come as no surprise, I've gone for the steak, presented beautifully. The same can't be said about my camera angle here, which sadly resulted in nearly taking out my steak. Immediately, one of the cabin crew came to check on me and offered me some more champagne. I'll have to drop my camera more, eh? Just a quick note, the crew so far have been flawless. Anyway, what's the steak like? Unfortunately, I can't say it was that great. I mean, sure, it was tasty, but cooked well done. In my experience, only two airlines cook a steak properly on board, Etihad First Class and Air France Business and Le Premier. I did, however, enjoy it and eat it all, as you can see. Just as my plate was cleared, I experienced perhaps the worst turbulence I've ever had on a plane. The whole aircraft is violently shaking for a good 20 minutes. This was due to our route over Iceland. After the turbulence clears, it's time to kick those Tims off and get the provided slippers on. Let's grab my Lalique PJs and head over to the loo for a review. The bathroom is small but immaculate, even featuring fresh orchids and a floor to ceiling mirror. Let's unpack those PJs then, provided as a long sleeve t-shirt and fitted trousers, and they're super soft to the touch. I like that I'm provided with coat hangers for my clothes, which will be hung up whilst I sleep. And transform. What do you reckon? Let's freshen up before returning to my suite. Amenities in the bathroom are all Lalique, which smells beautiful. Yes, I'm aware I'm an idiot. 
I head back briefly to my suite, whilst the F8 puts the finishing touches to my bed. After a few sips of Evian, it's ready. So come with me and see one of the comfiest beds in the sky. It also gives you a chance to see the cabin as a whole. I love the mood lighting and overall cabin aesthetics. It's classy, albeit rather masculine. Right, welcome to One Alpha, aka my bed in the clouds. It's very impressive, and the attention to detail is phenomenal. The Egyptian cotton adorned duvet is soft and very comfortable. There's also a mattress topper, which feels like I'm sinking into a proper five-star hotel bed. The pillow is plump and supportive, and overall, I'm very comfortable. Given my two hours of sleep the night before, it really now is time for a nap. I awake to what seems like an endless morning. Given our early departure, it's morning for our entire eight hour flight. Left for me by my bed is the cutest note from the SQ cabin crew. Again, a lovely and thoughtful touch. Thanks guys. Let's head back over to my suite then, as well, you'll never guess what time it is. Well, I have to say I slept wonderfully. Goodness me, so obviously I am now back in my seat one Foxtrot and it's food time again. I'm provided with another digital menu and opt for another round of satay because, well, why not? And of course, I keep saying it over and over. That might be the very best meal I've ever had on a plate. It's just so, so good. Next up are the braised egg noodles. Of course, my first meal didn't really feature any Asian dishes, which perhaps is a little silly, so let's make up for that now. These went down wonderfully. I'm now provided with a surprise, another round of caviar. The cabin manager saw how much I enjoyed it last time, and as they had another portion loaded, why not? I enjoyed this with a vintage 2007 Comte, which was delicious. Can you tell I'm a rather happy boy here? As I sip away and watch the world go by, it occurs to me this has to be one of the top three flights I've ever taken. Okay, let's have an outfit change ready for landing. I'm not walking through JFK dressed in my PJs. Back up my seat, the slippers come off and the Tims are back on. As we descend into New York, I'm treated to a spectacular winter wonderland. I'm very excited to be back in the States. It's been such a great experience today. The only negatives I can say about the experience is the ground service in Frankfurt with the unpremium first class lounge provision and that steak which wasn't cooked perfectly. But these are only minor notes and I have to say as a rating, this is a nine out of 10 flight and as stated, one of my best. Thank you so much, take care. Well guys, welcome to New York. I think you can guess already that that was a fabulous flight. I hope you've enjoyed coming along. Let me know, as always, what you thought in the comments below. I'll catch you guys all again next week. Bye.